It's Tuesday, April 25th, 2023. This is the first day that's been nice enough to get out here in a couple of weeks. Almost a couple of weeks. Those Colorado lows come by and they just, uh, they take so many days to move away. And that's exactly what happened. Fortunately, we didn't get um, an appreciable amount of precipitation. We got snow a couple of times, but only enough to say we got snow. There was really no accumulation for any period of time. And I'm glad for that. Uh, you can see the, you can hear the toads in the, in the pond over here. I'll turn this around. And so the long-term viewers can see uh, the old apiary here. Of course, the bees used to be up in this area here, flooded out last year, so I moved to a different area uh, right next door, but just up higher on, on higher ground. So this is kind of the center of my property. It's a low area. It's not a full-time swamp, but in the spring, certainly the water sits here quite a while and drains out. And uh, there's, there's usually no standing water there in the summer, uh, but it's it's definitely kind of the lowest spot on my property, kind of right in the middle. But today, today we have some flight, and uh, we have some empty jars here. I don't know if we have empty pails. The pails had more because the pails are twice as big as the jars, and I filled those pails up. Uh, a few days after I filled the jars up. So I'll probably fill the jars again. The bees are not starving. They're storing that syrup. Uh, so I'm not too worried about getting them filled up right on time. But I will refill them. The tank is, I don't know how many liters are in the tank still. Maybe 150 liters, 200 liters in the tank. Uh, so, okay, so for the, the, uh, volume measurement challenged people uh, these are half gallon jars and one gallon pails approximately they're four liter pails and two liter jars 1.9 liter jars actually so filling those up takes a little bit there's there's about 100 colonies or so maybe a couple more than 100 out here uh, so you know putting half a pail in a full jar is going to take 200 liters out of that tank. It's not incredibly warm here yet today. It's, uh, I think it was six when I came out. I think it might be more like eight or nine now. Uh, that's not very warm. I think uh, 10 C is like F uh, 50, 50 F. So it's not terribly warm. But I wanna do three things here. Well, four, baby. You see, I've put a, I can't even see the screen, but it's over here. There's a, right near that nozzle, there's a, a pallet of bees on a little skid. I'm gonna just move that sideways onto that stand. I had left about 11 colonies in the building until now, since winter, because we, we kind of checked them just as I brought them out and, and there was about 11, I think that showed they were quite weak. Uh, so I left them in there just, just so that they would not have cold weather to put up with. I fed them patties and jars. Some of them perished, uh, but I think I have eight here now that uh, are still going. I don't know if they'll still keep going or not. So the, the idea is, and I kind of preached to to newer beekeepers, um, you know, don't don't hold so much importance on the queen. The queen is very important, but every part of that hive is important. So even though I don't hold those colonies as being quote viable colonies, uh, I do hold the resources that they have as uh, useful. So what I can do is, if that colony makes it until I get my queens then I just requeen that and they should be off to the races. 
Uh, so that's what those are sitting around for. Otherwise, we're going to put some patties on, I, I believe. I mean, I haven't checked in them, so we're going to see if they need patties. I, I'm pretty sure they will. Uh, they're on my my open pollen, dry pollen feeder over there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm going to get some samples, hopefully. I'm going to do some Nozema testing, see if I can up my game on, on my bee health. And that's the that's the plan for today. These three here, uh, they're not even open. Uh, they're closed right off. So I have to check and see if they're still alive. These are dead outs. I just used those to carry these out here. Um, so I thought if, if they're still alive, I'll just set them on the skid beside these other nukes. We'll go from there. Whoa, they're definitely alive. Holy smokes. Okay. Am I going to get stung, Charlie? There's a little cluster in there yet. I had jars on these, but I took them off just for transport. Oh, there's no shortage of feed in that box though. Holy smokes. It's heavy for a four framer. There's a tiny cluster there still too. I'm not sure they'll make it, but I should have made some of those double screen boards for myself. Set these up top of some other colonies. Okay, I'll open the doors. I'll open the door on the docile ones first. And then the this one's really active. Okay, that little job is done. Okay, so you might have seen my consolidations the other day, and this ended up being an empty spot. These two were in the building, and they were uh, still going. Actually, they're pretty, pretty good. Uh, so what I did here is I just set it on this little skid, and then I can slide it sideways onto that pallet. See how long I can go without a veil. I don't get stung. There's some pretty decent activity on these, hopefully not too heavy. Yeah, they're heavy enough. Okay, I'll have to get some jars for these. Oh, there's syrup leaking everywhere. So there's another pair. One, one of them expired, but this one's still going. I'll put it right here. Okay, let's try and move these over. I can hear them when I do that, so sound like they're pretty decent. 
Okay, I have yet to clean out any of my dead outs, so I'm gonna need to get at that. I haven't had hardly any warm weather. I, I'd like to do that indoors, or outdoors, I should say. I don't like to do it indoors. This is uh, number 10. We're trying to get some samples to uh, get some nosema counts. And I don't want to sample my queens, so let's see if we can find them. This should be a yellow queen. I hate taking these brood frames out because it's not a very warm day. Precious few resources this time of year. So my wife is the the queen finding queen, so she's gonna find the queen here for me. Yeah, I've had them all out already. Oh you did? Yeah, I just didn't see her. It, she should be yellow if she's marked. Oh, found her. She's not marked though. Okay. Is she on that frame? She's right there. Well, I'm going to mess with her. Put her in the box here. We'll get our sample. Take the lid off that for me. Yeah. I don't like this. I just don't like it. Don't There's need. so many. We just need so. Well, that's a thing too. They want old bees, but there are no old. <laughs> well, they should be all old, but I'm gonna get them anyway. Okay, get the lid ready. Okay, yeah, so your poop level is, I'd say your poop level is one on this one. Okay. Good. It's Thursday, April 27th, 2023. And if I seem tired, that's only because I am. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be, it's just part of getting old, I suppose. Uh, this week has just been a blur. And uh, it was nice that I actually got a really good rest on a weekend. Did a little bit of work, but uh, I, I tried to take it easy on the weekend. I really needed a rest. So I got that. And uh, it was a good time because the weather's been really cold. Uh, last week it, we got a Colorado low and it takes a number of days to recover from that. Uh, yesterday was the first day that was decent. And so I went to the bee yard yesterday. And uh, uh, one thing I did was I moved out a few colonies that I, I had left in the wintering building. And uh, I moved those out into the apiary. I just had left them in because they were pretty small and I wanted to keep them, you know, away from the cold nights. And I think that was the right call. There were a few that uh, didn't survive even at that, but there were a few that did. So if I can get those two, I, I, I marked them as such in the apiary so I know which ones they are. If I can get those to uh, uh, nurse them along until I have queens, they just get requeened and then they can build from there, hopefully. Um, and that same day, my wife was helping me and we, we took some samples for, uh, for Nozema testing. I'm pretty sure I have a Nozema problem here and um, I, I need to solve that. That's, that's my next hurdle as a beekeeper. I've been kind of just kind of riding the wave and it's time for me to up my game. So I need to resolve that. 
Uh, I took some samples. I, I took them to the lab yesterday. Uh, so Wednesday, um, I went to Winnipeg, did some deliveries, and I went to the lab. I took my samples in. Drop a boatload of money there. Holy smokes. But, you know, if we can save a few colonies, it'll pay for itself. But that's, not, that's just the testing. That's not even the treatments. The treatments are going to cost a whole lot more. Uh, more money. Maybe not more money than the testing, but additional money. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. And yesterday, you know, I had to go into Winnipeg. Um, and I wanted to go into Winnipeg because I'm getting to the time of life when I go to more funerals than weddings. And, and uh, I lost a, a dear aunt of mine recently and so I went to spend time with family and friends there uh, at her memorial service. It was very nice, very nice service. Um, she was such a sweet woman. So that was that was Wednesday and that's kind of what went on there. It was an extremely long day. I was gone from home for a long time yesterday but got that done. So today back in the shop uh, I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be out again tomorrow, so I don't think I'll get anything done in the shop tomorrow. So we're back at the pallets. Uh, I've got all of the underpinnings done for the pallets, uh, for the customers' pallets. I haven't done the underpinnings for my tan, uh, but you know that's okay. And uh, so yeah, so I'm I'm just working away at those, and I'll kind of show you here <clears throat> what I've been doing for uh, putting the shims on the tops. Every year I get a little bit of a different process and, and uh, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it saves a little time, sometimes it saves a little effort, and sometimes it saves both. Uh, so, and, and sometimes I forget what I did the year before because <laughs> it's a long time ago. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you this, what I'm doing here today. One thing I'm doing differently this year is I'm, I'm keeping my work area a little more clear of parts. I'll bring parts up here slowly as I work. Uh, and that's because I want to do these uh, eight at a time. And then once I do eight, then I will raise the blade and I'll run them through the saw uh, just to trim the front and make it all beautiful. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, so the first method here, this first part of this process, I don't know if you can see this, there's uh, I use plenty of glue, and so it's always squeeze out. I want to make sure I clean the squeeze out uh, off the back. See, I've I've flushed this two by four with the plywood, and so that determines that that's the back. And that's because the two by fours are cut to size or cut to length, but the uh, the uh, plywood is is cut over size. And so I'm just gonna so just trim that because when I run them through the saw, this side goes against the fence. And then, mostly for aesthetics, there's squeeze out on the side here. Sometimes my knife digs into the wood, try not to make too much of a mess. Okay, and there's some on the bottom here, on the runner, but I'll get that in a minute. <clears throat> I'll just do this one. I usually do them standing up, honestly. I'm trying to do it sitting down so you can see it. So there's this bit here. That utility knife makes a makes short work of that. And there's strips of glue everywhere here on the floor. <laughs> okay, now there's a little bit of squeeze out, sometimes a tiny bit, sometimes more, on the front of these runners. And if you'll recall, this is where the cleat on the cover sits uh, when you stack the hives. And so I don't want that squeeze out interfering with that system. So it's a 
pretty easy. Just slice it against there and slice it against there. And it comes off. Kind of awkward doing so that you can see, but it's working. Okay. Okay, so now taking note of where my back is, which is the flush side, and you can see here where this hangs over. Because again, that two by four is final length and the plywood is not. Because the end, the side shim and the front shim are cut oversized. Uh, some of the front shims aren't, uh, but uh, you know, they're theoretically cut over size it doesn't really matter I try to but so this is a little different this year um, in previous years I would space my rear shim uh, ahead by uh, three quarters of an inch <coughs> and my shims are generally an inch wide three quarter inch tall so it's three quarter inch tall, but it's an inch and three quarter wide so that it'll sit thusly on here. And that's a design change that's new for this year. Talked to the customer about my idea. He thought it was a good idea and it might help him out because one thing this customer does, it's really handy to have an insight into customer's operation because then you can think about what they do and, uh, make allowance for that if there's any you know any innovations you want to incorporate uh, just things that maybe make their work day a little bit smoother and I'll tell you about this when I get put on there so once something that's kind of new <clears throat> is I've been I've been just kind of tacking this with my small stapler flush to the back, flush to the end, and then tack it on this side. I've actually started doing that when I do the underpinnings as well. I'll, I'll line everything up and then just drive one of those little inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter to inch and a half. Inch and a half is better, uh, but I'm using inch and a quarter. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, just to hold things square and straight until I drive the screws and, and the big nails. Forgot to take my ring off again. I was wearing it at the funeral. Okay, so the next uh, piece is this, this side shim. And I just uh, run a little bead along there. Keeping in mind they're an inch wide, so we don't need to get super close to the edge. And again, I always like to put the pretty side up. If there's any scars, you put them down. It doesn't change the function of the piece. It just uh, makes it look a little nicer. Okay, this is... These side shims only get that narrow crown staple. And I'll put this one in. That blue glue bot, it's called glue bot. It's kind of cool, you know, works well for this project. Okay, so my, that's my center shim. Uh, 
that's my front shim. So I'll get some glue on these two. Because it's a broader area, I'll just spread that. I often get too much here. But I want to get a little bit on that. And if I need to clean the brush, I can clean it there. <clears throat> because that's where this piece is going. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I've cut myself a couple of guide blocks on a scrap. So I'll just stick this in here. That centers this center shim. And again, I'm going to tack it. And I'm tacking it right in the center of where that, that metal cleat will go. <coughs> I want to make sure it's centered so that it doesn't interfere with where I, where I uh, drive those screws. And again, take a little bit of glue from here, put it on that end grain. Okay. Let's stick that sucker right there. And another guide block to center that. And that's why I run inch and a quarter and not inch and a half. Because uh, whereas there's a two by four under here, and there's a two by four under here. There's no two by four under here, uh, so that'll go that'll go clean through. And it's a real dangerous thing because if you grab this pallet like that, that'll cut your fingers wide open. Uh, I don't want that. So now I switch, put my air protection on, because this stapler is really loud. And I'll staple here. I'll angle this one because this is an inch and a half staple as well. And if I angle it, it won't protrude. Right in the middle. And a bunch here. And that's it, save for one operation. And that is get my sample cleat, or clip I should say. Drill the screw holes. I'm only concerned with drilling the screw holes through that uh, lumber shim just to prevent cracking. The screws don't need a pilot. They're fine without a pilot. Uh, but I don't want it to crack. I try not to leave too much of a mess but finished product this bit of squeeze out is not an issue at all it's actually you know it's kind of good because customer can see that i used a lot of glue <laughs> hopefully I appreciate that and so that one's done ready for uh, ready for trimming on the front and uh, so i'll just get eight of these worked up and then i'll just push them through I uh, stack up eight onto a, a, a pallet and then I wrap them as eight. Then I can set two stacks of eight onto a, a full sized pallet and uh, just put them in the shed ready for, uh, ready for transport. I'll load the stacks of eight on my trailer, uh, back to back kind of thing. If I'm good, I can get four across on there. I think I'm gonna take my small trailer this time. I took the big one last time and uh, if I take the small one, I can get uh, four stacks across. So it's 32 across. And who knows, can I get 150 on there? I can get four stacks in the truck, uh, as long as they're no more than 36 inches tall. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how much we have. If there's too much, I'll take the big trailer again. Uh, no, that's it, that's what's going on today. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, have fun. I promised to show you why I changed the uh, rear shim on these, but I didn't. And so I'm gonna show you now.
Um, I don't have a box to demonstrate, but this customer, the way he manages his colonies is he often tips the, the boxes up to look underneath the frames. And while the front of this pallet has, has this front shim where the box can tip up and sit here and here, the back of it didn't have that. It just had the one inch wide shim there and the box didn't have anything to sit on. So I suggested that we tip that or we make that wider so that he could tip that back and then the box has something to sit on here. He thought that would be a good idea. So I hope to get some feedback from him uh, when he gets these pallets and see, see how that's working out for him. So that's why I've changed that on this iteration. I think this is about version four of this pallet <laughs> for me. So I guess, you know, improvement is good, right? Well, I was going to say, you've been complaining about snow, but there's yeah. no snow here, so I don't know what to think. Yeah, finally, so the fields are bearing up. and There was that rain. The rain took it away. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so now we're taking a step forward, I hope. Usually this time of year, like we're, when's May 1st? Um, Monday. On Monday. Monday. Usually we have the wheat sowed by then, but yeah. no go. Oh, not going to be this yeah, year. Yeah, it's pretty late this year. Yeah. So my wife Carol and I came out to the area to uh, buy this nice shiny truck. And so we did just that. And uh, there's Carrie's nice shiny red truck. That's awesome. And uh, so not, not far away. So we stopped in for a visit. You know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's pretty shy on YouTube. So it's hard to get him to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told Carol not to park here because right beside the bees, yeah, the new there's... truck all nice and shiny will get all bee shit. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. It's going to get bee shit at my house anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Nice that he could take some time away from the yard to well to be honest i had left hi. carrie in the yard to work so I'm yeah <laughs> so i better not keep you or i'm gonna be in the doghouse no, too i always have time for a cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> price of that engine's gonna go down <laughs> yeah all right well let's uh let's these go are my some. i'll just show you my salvage colonies these are my waste of time make work project now this is this is, what you were going to use the double screen boards on yeah, yeah as soon as i get things together i'm gonna salvage whatever I can here, but this is part of the 13% loss. And they seem to be flying, little buggers. You but know, there's not much to them. It, you got enough to put a queen in, uh, you know, in my yard, that's not too bad. See a frame and half of bees in there. Yeah. So I don't know how much brood, we haven't really gone through them, but we'll just, uh, what else can you do in a year like this? That's, that's, that's my method. Just you get enough, you can put a queen in it and off they go. Yeah, look at, we had them inside though, uh, through all the snow we had. Yeah. And just put them out this morning and yeah. they're shitting everywhere. Yeah. Very shitty this morning, uh, this year. But they're flying, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's what, 10? Uh, See, it, out it here? It was 10 anyways, yeah. yeah. And if the sun was out, it would be better yeah, too. Yeah, the sun, the sun was out and it's yeah. clouded over now. Yeah. So they will stay here until we get through the rest of them. And then I think I can use those double screens and stack them three tall on top of them and just leave them alone and see what happens. On top Can't of one another? Yeah, yeah, like a strong one underneath and then... Well, yeah, help them, you know, they can help each other out that way. I should be doing... A couple of days ago, I was trying to deal with mine and I'm thinking, why didn't I make a couple more of those green boards? <laughs> I was making them. <laughs> yeah, I've never used them, so I'm not sure how it's going to work, but yeah. I've always used excluders. Yeah. Yeah. That, I learned you got to be careful with that. You don't do it too early. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you'll just end up losing the top queen. You'll, you'll be doing combines instead of salvages. That's the problem. And through a cold spring, it's tough too. Yeah. Well, we might as well yeah. come in for coffee. All right. Let's go in for some coffee. That's all my dead equipment. The far side is the, uh, everything that I've collected this spring. And this is everything from last year that we called out. Oh yeah. Is survival okay? Like it didn't get too messy on you? Um, that we battled with wax moth. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I know we, that's a challenge. We burnt the uh, the stuff that was damaged. You know, we just salvaged what we could. But that other, this is the stuff we pulled out this it's spring. Not that bad. You know, because you're <laughs> you're ten times me, and and when I look at my pile of deads, 
We're just going through a second time now, so we expect to see that again once okay. we pull out all the problems. We're yeah. starting to see some queen problems and right. colonies are shrinking away. But I think what we're gonna do is do a pretty tough call on this. This equipment's good to go, but this I think we're gonna go through and render down anything that's old or anything that has even a little bit of bee poop on it. Yeah. Because this uh, nose is just catching up to me. I'm not sure. Like, just look at this. Thing. Yeah, I think it's uh, really killing me too. This, like I'll test that before just to make sure that's nosema, but I'm finding more of it this year. So I'm not sure what to do, but the only thing I can do is just purge. Now you say test that, can you actually test that? Yeah, I take a little scraping of it. Oh, and, is that right? And, uh, so you hydrate it and then see if the spores are in there? Dilute it, yeah. yeah. And you can still see the spores. The, something like this. Interesting. But something like this, like this stuff hasn't been showing as nosema. This is just, I think, canola honey in the stress. Just that cakey stuff. But this we've been finding, this has been more, and typically when I, like years past, this wasn't nosema. Yeah. But now it is, so I'm wondering if nosema apis has come back to haunt me. Well, that's why I'm paying big bucks for a PCR test, because, you know. Just to see. I'm not a big believer in throwing a bunch of treatments around and. No, that's just I it. need to know. Even if I, it doesn't affect how I treat, I need to know. This all should be burnt anyways, look at the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Did you say the blue ones are the, Yeah. These is are, it the, these blue ones? These have a piece of my heart. And, yeah. These are the, yeah, these are tough to get rid of, eh? I cut the tree down, <laughs> cut the lumber, dried the lumber, planed the lumber, pieced the lumber, milled the lumber, and then put yeah. the boxes together. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of work. Yeah. 25 years old, they're, they're not Tough doing too to say bad. goodbye to. Yeah. Poplar box. And then these ones here I built out of wood I bought, not the tree I cut down, but they're still 25 years, no, about 20 years old, those ones, yeah. Huh. So. I've always felt that the brood chambers put up with a lot more than honey supers. They're oh. outside a lot more. Yeah, and with my arrangement too, they're stuck side by side, so I get some rot there yeah. too. So that calls them out pretty quick. Yeah. These dip boxes actually handle that a lot better. But these painted boxes, especially my my spruce, they, they really absorb the, the uh, carpenter ants get in there and tear them apart. That's spruce? That is a spruce, yeah. Okay, but some of them are poplars? I mean, you mentioned um, poplars earlier. I might have misspoke. Um, yeah. Fur, I know that one's fur. The gray one? Yeah, I bought that in from, I'm not sure where it is. That's, that's fur, but this is spruce, spruce. here. Yeah. yeah. And of course, that's why it's so short, because it shrunk on me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> tough. Yeah, makes a good brood box, but a honey box, everybody curses because they, they shrink this way, yeah. but they shrink this way too, so then you have trouble oh, getting yeah. the frames out. Yeah. Yeah, a thousand of those boxes we made in 10,000 frames. That was a lot. Whoa. Yeah. A thousand boxes. Boy, yeah, you're I told build Murray Lewis said, yeah, we're going to be building, building our own equipment. He just kind of smiled. Yeah. yeah, everybody does. <laughs> everybody, me included. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to build my own boxes. And then you look at Murray's price list and you think, yep. what would I rather be doing than building boxes? And me, just about anything, because boy, I hate building boxes. Yeah, and every time one of my frames come through, we curse and swear at it. And Murray's is... Follow through. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those Just, look familiar. Yeah, this, this honey house is a disaster. But. There's the double screen birds you last saw in my shop. Oh, yes. Got some color to them. And the cleats. Yeah. So now the lids are going to hold on a little tighter. Did you end up doing anything with the end of that box? Because I allowed for that, you know. Um, I allowed you to cut a sixteenth off of this to, to get nice wood to work with. Oh, to no. glue to. Uh, we kind of shaved it down with the yeah. hive tool, but we didn't do too much to it. It fits really nice. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, it fits really nice. Good. Well, I'm glad you're happy with them. Add a bit of color. It'll good, be good for mating nukes. Right on. Wow. Yeah. Right on. Oh, we can do it. Yeah. Oh, this is... <laughs> when he does wax, there's skids and skids of it that's this high. Yeah. yeah. The old, this is the old wax melter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have the old new one here cooking away. And then the... That's a little more familiar. Yeah, we're doing a tough, tough call, like I say, on those brood boxes. Yeah. So we're just going to render them all down. And, you your frames, yeah, just oh. taking the top end wax off them just to do something. Burn the rest. What uh, temperature do you render that at? I think she's at? got it right at 93. So that'll 
like that you ditch the plastic in that eh yeah everything gets thrown away because you can you can uh do it cool enough that you don't ruin the plastic you know this is what's coming out that's that pretty good yeah it's not you could reuse that the permanent is uh, warping more but this this has more right, body so, to it maybe yeah. Yeah, you can uh, you can run it seventy. I think we're at seventy seventy five. Yeah, we might cool it down a little bit just you, to help with that. Do you fill it with water? Are yeah. Submerge the frames. Oh uh, no, we've we've just been putting them in just to melt down. Oh, yeah. you just cook them straight. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Probably and then she. That's probably why it's different. She. Uh, I fill mine with water. She just pulls it out, and then we'll do a press after we get the frames out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, huh, I never thought of that. I it's a lot that. of work. Yeah, but yeah, it is. Absolutely is. Cost recapture, I guess. Yeah. So this thing never stops, actually. It just keeps going. Yeah. Should rent your mine off season. Yeah, yeah. That's what I need is a second when I was talking to Simon. And I said, I need another one. <laughs> bring, bring it over in November and you can use it all winter. It's through the, um, the honey pole. She's shoveling in there every day. Uh, we start on Monday, we finish on Friday, and then we run the, the press, like the cycle through on the weekend. So if I had a second one, then we could do it all through the weekday and just keep them going, eh? Right on. And we always fall behind, so we have barrels to the side. Yeah. So I'm just gonna prove to James that oh. <laughs> I'm here and you're not. <laughs> and we're gonna have coffee. <laughs> James is welcome too next time I, you're through. I brought a Tim's for him, but I drank it on the way, so oh. <laughs> you know. It's, it's a thought that counts, right? 